الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له نصلي ونسلم ونزكي ونبارك على سيدنا ومولانا ومرشدنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلوات وأزكى التسليمات وعلى آله الغر الميامين وعلى صحابته أهل الكرم والفضل ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد As we continue to talk about the human soul and the ways of helping the soul be online to begin with the soul has to know its creator its maker Allah the almighty <coughs> However, this knowledge is not a first time learning. But the souls were acquainted with God already before they were brought into this world. So the this and this time it is a second uh, learning or it is sort of reminding about something that we already know. It's what we call dhikr to remind or remembrance. But the souls already were acquainted. They know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, from the very beginning, when Allah created the souls and then put them in their capsules, in their tiny sh shells, let me see this here. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمْ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَاتِهِمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the souls of children of Adam we're talking about the souls before the bodies were created so before the six days of creation this thing happened. That God had already created the souls before the six days of creation and had already acquainted them with himself. So when he created them, we were talking about the first creation. His first creation is the creation at the beginning when God created everything out of that. <clears throat> life was not created yet because dead was created before life he said khalaq al mauta wal hayata god created dead and created life and then created us out of the out of, the, out of two of them so he created us out of dead and then created us out of life but this incident took place at the beginning when God created us out of that. We call that the first creation. So when he's done with that creation, then he brought us, he resurrected us. He 
He awakened us from that. And then ask us the question, our soul. Alastu barabbikum, am I not your Lord? Am I not your creator, your sustainer, your cherisher? And all the souls on that day said to Allah, yes, you are our creator, our Lord. So that was before there was no heaven and there was no earth as yet. Then God put them back to sleep. Then he created the heavens and the earth. And he placed all the souls in a place called Al-Barzaq. Barzakh is like a big corridor big tunnel that's, that stands between this wall and the next wall. So there he placed all the souls. Then he began to create the bodies now. And the first body was created was in Adam's body. So when he created one body, then he bring the soul from there and place it in that body. When somebody again is conceived in the womb, his mother carries him in the womb, then they bring the soul and then place it back in that body. Like in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ أَحْدَكُمْ يُجْمَعَ قَلْقُهُ فِي بَطْنِ أُمِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا نُطْفَةً ثم يكون علاقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك that one of you is created in the womb of your mother in a water form for 40 days in a blood form for 40 days in a flesh for 40 days ثم يرسل إليه الملك then they will send the angel to the baby after the 340 days, 120 days, four months. Four months after the growth of the baby in the womb, then the angel will come, sent by God. And the angel is commanded to breathe the soul or the spirit into the baby. Then the angel will breathe the, 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 the spirit into the baby after four months. Then the angel also will open the, the book. Now you just your records from that day. A book in which all his deeds in his life will be recorded. All his earnings, all his works, everything that he will do and how long he will live or she will live and how she or he will die. So the angel will write that from that day. And then you are born into this world now and then you start your journey until the time that is written for you to die comes and then you die and you go back to where you came from. So hence we said that the body, your body, is only a temporary dress that has been put around your soul. Because your soul it itself cannot live in this world without something to protect it. So hence the function of our body is to be a case to be a vessel for our souls. But the most important thing in us is not our body, it's our soul. And we lose, we lose that out of focus and our body becomes our main concern. Even though the body is created for the sake of the soul and not the other way around. 
But as we live in this world, we forget more and more our past. And our knowledge becomes limited to this world. And that's the beginning of going away from God. So therefore God sent messengers and prophets to remind us again about the beginning, well, how we began before we came into this world, what happened to us. So it's a matter of reminding, it's a matter of learning something new. We already learned everything before we came in this world. We forgot. So Allah sent reminders and warn us. To remind us and to warn us about the coming of the day of resurrection. So your soul should be your main concern. Should be concerned about the well-being and the welfare of your soul, your nafs. As much as your body needs water and food to be sustained, to stay alive, your soul needs the same thing. It needs water, it needs food, except that it's not rice and whatever you have here. That does not feed your soul. Your soul also needs to be fed and watered, but not material food or material water. It needs a different kind of water. What sustains your soul, what keep it alive, is knowledge of God. What keeps your soul alive is remembrance, vicar. What keeps your soul alive is fikr. So this is an immaterial sustenance. So all that Allah summarized into one word called taqwa, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّالِ تَقْوَى وَتَقُونِ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ So all the things that sustain the soul, you can, if you gather it into one word, that word is called taqwa. So that is the sustenance for your soul. That's the only thing that will keep your soul alive until you go back to God again. You don't die. You don't be a living dead. One whose body is alive and his soul is dead inside him. Can you imagine that? There are millions of human beings who are in that state. They are walking on their feet, but their soul inside their body is a dead soul. They are carrying a dead body within themselves. That's very awful. like babies who die in the womb of their mothers. And they, had, they are born stillborn, as they call them. The same thing happens to you. If you don't maintain your soul, don't keep it alive, it will die before you die, as they say. Hence Allah said, Amuatun Gairu Ahya, Oma Yishurun Ayyana Yub Asun. They are dead and they are not alive and they are not aware when they will be resurrected. Amuatun Gairu Ahya. So hence, the life, true life is not the life of your body, it's the life of your soul and your heart. And in for each, as a sign, when somebody's heart is alive, there are symptoms. When his soul is alive, there are symptoms. When your soul is dead also, there are signs and symptoms. There's a story of this Abdul Malik. He's a king of, of the Umayyad dynasty. So he came on one time in a visit 
to Medina, and he went to a very well-known scholar there. And he said to him that, he was talking to him, I said to him that where I am now, when I do something bad, it doesn't bother me. When I do something good, it doesn't make me happy neither. So that scholar said to him, لَقَدْ تَمَّ فِيكَ مَوْتُ الْقَلْبِ Now your heart is completely dead. That's why. It does not respond to evil and good anymore. Whether it's good or bad, it's all equal. Because if you do something good, it should make you feel happy. That's not pride. It's a different thing. If you do something bad also, it should make you feel bad. But when you do something bad, you don't feel bad. When you do something good, you don't feel good. It's because your heart is not alive. It's dead. With a living heart that should know, should respond to darkness and light equally, should shun away, should flinch from darkness and expand and open up to light. So hence a good deal and a bad deal. If your heart does not respond in either way, because a response is the sign of life. Only a living being responds. A dead being doesn't respond if you call him. It doesn't respond to cold or heat. Anything, nothing. He said, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu stajibu. When Allah said, respond, he's talking to those who are alive. Because only living, the living can respond. The difference between a dead and a living is not hearing, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the day of Badr, when he was speaking to the leaders of Mecca who fell at Badr. After three days, he spoke to them, Ya Utba, Ya Utba or Shayba, Ya Abu Al-Hakam, Abu Jahal. And he was, he was talking to them, like he's talking to a living being. What your Lord promised you, what my Lord promised me, I have, found, I have met it. Have you met your promise? Sayyidina so Umar said to him, why are you talking to people who are dead bodies? Rasulullah said, No. Wa alaykum as salam. You don't hear me more than they do. That means they hear me as much as you do hear me. Except that they cannot respond, they can't reply. So that that's the, that's the mark between a living, a truly living being and a dead being, is the ability to respond. When you are called, you respond. When God say come, you come. He say go, go. But when you hear the call, you don't act, you don't react, then you are as good as dead. So that's the only line between a dead and a living is response. Istijaba. Istajibu lillahi wa lirrasooli Iza da'akum lima yuhyikum Respond to Allah and his messenger when they call you to life. Say, come, on, come to life. But what's life? Come to faith. Faith is life. So when they call you, you respond what? And also those who respond also, some respond in the first hour, in the first moment. They are the sabiqun as sabiqun. They are the foremost. There are those who respond in the second moment. Those who respond in the third moment, and that's it. That's not, only three moments. If you miss that, it's gone. So hence when Sayyidina Musa said to his people, Inna Allah ya'amurukum an dazdahu baqara. Allah is commanding you to sacrifice a cow. They should respond right away. What is calling them? 
instead of responding right away, they began to ask many questions. And sometimes that's what makes you delay. That's a sign of doubt. Too much questioning. If you believe, you respond at the first call. They said, ask God, to tell us what kind of cow. So now the first moment has passed by. You miss the first opportunity. Now the door is closing because when Allah calls, He opened the door. Open the door, call. Those who come in first, call again, second group. Each time the door gets closed, shuts down, one third, one third. And then now it's very narrow now. The third call, if you don't go, you don't make it inside. Then the third call, he closes the door. Only three moments. So they lose that first opportunity. So he said, he said this cow, la faridun wa la bikrun awanum bayna dalik fafalu na tumarun. This cow is not old, is not young. Please do what you are told to do right away. Because he knows that the door has gone one third close. But no. Tell your Lord still to tell us what should be the call of the cow. Allah said, Safra'un fakhi'ul launuha is yellow. Tasurru nadirin. So the door went two-thirds close. Qalu du'u lana rabbaka. Still ask your Lord, what is the function of the cow? What kind of work? There are cows that bring water from the well. There are cows that plow the land. There are cows that, ca that pull the, the cart. <laughs> to Allah, none of these matters to Allah. Allah just wants a cow. Whichever cow you have, when you say, so the cow, the first cow you meet is slaughter that cow. It will do, whether it's small or big. Don't go and look. He said, this cow is a cow. It's a cow that plows the land, but does not draw water from the well. It's not domesticated. They said, now we got it now. Allah said they finally slaughtered the cow and almost they never did. <coughs> almost. So the living beings, their degrees of life also depends on the degree of their response. Those who are the most living among them are those who respond at the first call. Next to them at the second call and the third call, and there's no more call after that. The door is closed until next time. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِنَفْسِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِمَنْ آمَنَ وَأَسْلَمَ وَصَالِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ أَجْمَعِينَ And inshallah today, on that note, there is someone here who has responded to the call of Allah today and want to become, inshallah, want to enter the door and become a Muslim. Take shahada. So, inshallah, after the uh, Juma prayer, inshallah, I will give him shahada. Takbir. Allah Takbir. Allah Takbir. Allah Takbir. Allah Takbir. Allah Takbir.